Greetings. I'm honored to be able to talk to you today about the Concrete Preservation Institute's program at Alcatraz Island. The preservation community has recognized the importance of preserving modern heritage, which puts more concrete in the realm and responsibility of preservation than ever before. This is something that we're addressing with the Concrete Preservation Institute in terms of how to address some of the specific needs of concrete and also train talented people for our industry. CPI is a nonprofit educational foundation that offers hands-on and leadership training combined with unique life experiences for young adults seeking new ways to serve while gaining passion and connections for future careers. CPI partners with the U.S. National Park Service at Alcatraz Island. We also partner with the United States Army as an official career skills program for transitioning soldiers during their last 180 days of active duty service. That career skills program is beginning at Pearl Harbor starting this year. We'll continue our program at Alcatraz for military veterans who have already left service and we also invite college students to apply for the program on a space available basis if the veterans do not fill any given session. A bit of history about Alcatraz and its long history beginning with the military. That history, which includes Civil War and California Gold Rush linkages, is often overshadowed by the visitors' sort of dark tourism curiosity focused on the limited years the island served as a federal penitentiary. Most of the 22-acre island structures were built by the U.S. Army beginning in the mid-1800s and are currently in a state of severe deterioration, including the prison building that was the largest reinforced concrete structure in the world when it was built beginning in 1909. Alcatraz Island was designated as a National Historic Landmark in 1986 and is visited by 1.5 million people each year. TripAdvisor ranked Alcatraz as 2015's most visited landmark site in the United States and the eighth most visited landmark in the world. I'll move ahead now and show you some images of people working on our teams at Alcatraz Island, and then we'll follow up for the majority of the presentation with specific examples of the projects and our preservation first approach. We offer three 12 week sessions each year. Participants need not have any experience to join our program. We, we start at ground zero when they get there with OSHA safety certification, tool training. Some of our participants have never even handled a power tool before. We develop all of their skills in with minor projects and then they move on to a much bigger project. Many of the participants don't necessarily have an interest in concrete or construction or preservation, but generally two or three weeks into the into the session, they're they're pretty well hooked on this kind of uh, career. This is Jessica. She had never used power tools, had started out as a business major in college, and decided this would be great, great background to do a business type career within the, within the construction industry. And she has gone on to a management level career and is, is just having a, a tremendous time in the industry as a result of the experience at Alcatraz. Keaton came straight out of the Army. He was an airborne soldier, meaning jumped out of airplanes, was looking for something that, that could keep him as excited as his, as his previous career. And although uh, working on old concrete might not quite measure up to that, he had to admit that this was a pretty amazing experience. And he's moving on to finish his college degree and uh, join our industry once he finishes.
This is Kevin. He uh, spent time in the, in the Army and was our team leader, given his previous leadership skills. And uh, part of what all of our students and participants on our teams have to do is interact with the public and the National Park Service on essentially a daily basis. So they're learning a lot of management, public relations, uh, logistical management, and that kind of thing every time, every session. We particularly like it when we have teams that combine college students with military veterans, as in the case right here. There's some, some amazing conversations that go on about the experiences each of them have had. And we've seen some very long-term friendships develop from that. We have had a tremendous record of, of young ladies and people of all types of backgrounds as a part of this program. They live and work together 24 hours a day. Sophia was on the team in 2011 at Alcatraz and after arriving as a very shy, first in her family to go to college, young lady, she was put in charge of as the safety coordinator for the team, which meant she had to tell everybody what to do on a daily basis and uh, really helped her with her coming out of her shell and, and becoming a manager. Again, in addition to doing the projects, public relations is a really big deal at a national park. For the participants in the Alcatraz program, we partner with the National Park Service for housing in the Marin Headlands, which is right across the Golden Gate Bridge. They stay in restored army barracks. We pick them up every morning in a van and bring them over into the city where we get on the boat and head over to Alcatraz and then head back in the afternoon. Days are full eight to five, sometimes longer. We have been known to work overnight if we're working in an area where visitors would be impacted. CPI brings resources to bear in preserving the structures on Alcatraz that might not be saved otherwise due to limited resources. This is possible due to the professional and academic strength as well as the industry influence of the CPI team. CPI's directors and staff include top leaders in concrete and construction industry, bringing experience in project management, engineering design, hands-on craft, technology development, research, and industry advancement, as well as expertise in preservation and education. Concrete Construction Magazine honored two of the CPI directors as among the five most influential people in the concrete industry. Peter Emmons was honored in 2005, and Tanya Clemens was honored in 2013. These two directors envisioned and co-developed the International Concrete Repair Institute's Concrete Surface Repair Certification Program that I'll discuss a bit later, which mirrors and was actually co-developed with the CPI curriculum. Volunteer, industry, academic, and government agency professionals often join the CPI team as guest lecturers, thereby increasing the quality and professionalism of the project outcomes through collaboration. These guest lecturers offer their time to benefit the projects and the participants, and they often seek for themselves professional development opportunities at CPI's level of dedicated concrete preservation which oftentimes goes beyond common repair practice they may have experienced in industry. Here we see Patrick Sparks, a structural engineer from Austin, Texas, who donates a lot of his time to work with our participants and talk to them about the engineering aspects of the project they're going to be undertaking.
we have an added giving back aspect to our nonprofit foundation, which is each team spends at least a day or two during their session engaging as mentors for at-risk youth from the inner city during uh, community service projects throughout the park. That tends to be one of the favorite memories at the end of each session. Our students just love that, that program. Safety is our number one priority. As I mentioned before, every participant gets enrolled in an OSHA safety certification as soon as they arrive and cannot proceed until they successfully complete that course. Our commitment to a preservation first approach is based on the US Secretary of the Interior's standards for the treatment of historic properties. This approach considers the durability of overall structures ahead of expediency or typical repair practice that may not be appropriate to historic resources. In other words, long-term durability of overall structures is more important than new repair interventions. Now this may seem obvious, but it gets complicated when you start to address building codes and industry standard practice. Of course, high quality pairs, repairs are important, but, and all the advanced uh, concrete technology and approaches are available to us. We have a lot of industry partners. But CPI's focus is first to consider the compatibility with historic materials, construction systems, and preservation needs, and how to minimally affect an existing structure. Given the, the program that CPI has established, we do have some flexibility in project scheduling to account for the teaching and learning aspects, and also to take our time on the preservation parts of the projects that may not be realistic in other circumstances. Our, approximately 10 years ago, the concrete repair industry, the broader concrete repair industry, collectively decided that they needed to increase repair quality and industry professionalism in order to reduce repair failures and meet existing built environment needs. The result today is the American Concrete Institute's new Concrete Repair Code and the International Concrete Repair Institute's companion Concrete Surface Repair Technician Certification Program. As I mentioned earlier, two of the directors of CPI are the co-authors of that nationwide ICRI, Concrete Surface Repair Technician Program. The ACI code focuses on requirements that engineers and design professionals will need to pay attention to. Whereas the ICRI certification is broadly focused on all individuals involved with concrete repair, including but not limited to contractors, material suppliers, design professionals, testing personnel, conservators, and other preservation people. Anyone may take the tier one part of the course. It's intended to educate and test a broad audience from beginner through practice professional. In order to, to qualify to take the tier two performance exam, you will have to prove that you have industry experience and then participate in an online performance exam that also includes a few test methods that need to be demonstrated in person. And those are handled over videotape. That program was designed to keep the cost down and get as many people certified as possible. These are important developments for the preservation community to be aware of. While neither the code Now I'll go ahead and show you some examples of projects. Alcatraz's historic puppy stairs, finally known as such because the small step riser tread size that was built to make travel more comfortable for the short-legged little corgi owned by one of the prison wardens. The staircase had suffered from a lot of years of deterioration and deferred maintenance. The structure is not a National Park Service operational priority, given that it's um, far from meets code, and it's only used by park staff and occasionally for guided tours. But 
because of its historical importance, prominent location, commanding design, highly visible deterioration, and lack of other resources to preserve, preserve the structure, we decided that would be one of our first major projects. For this section of the puppy stairs, a hand applied repair material similar in consistency to modeling clay was chosen as a practical consideration and also because it allowed for immediate texturing of the surfaces to aesthetically match the existing surfaces. Notice the upper right inset image. If you'll notice the lower left hand image that is the before condition with an arrow pointing to its completed condition. CPI developed a custom aesthetic treatments appropriate for historic resources and coined the new term repair aesthetics to describe our work in this regard. The approach made the patches aesthetically blend with a historic fabric to avoid the patchwork repair look that would otherwise have detracted from the historic character of the overall stair. We decided this approach was the best to use wherever we patched into an intact railing, panel, post, or handrail. In this image, you can see a before and after version, also using the aesthetic treatments to blend patches to the historic fabric. So again, this is a combination of using uh, sophisticated repair approaches with uh, customized surface treatments as far as texture and color. Where replacement of an entire railing panel, again, remember we had decided that our repair approach included a complete railing panel as a distinct character defining feature. So where it became necessary to replace an entire panel, again we only had to replace one on this stair, the replica panel was created compatible in scale, configuration, texture, and color, but remains somewhat detectable to the discerning eye that it is a new feature. The team determined this was the best approach with regard to the Secretary of the Interior standards. We didn't want a fake history for an entire panel. The schoolhouse presented some interesting challenges. At one point in the island's history, original prison building cell bars were removed and reused as reinforcing steel in the concrete construction. If this had been a typical project out not on a historic landmark, this most definitely would have been torn out. But it was worth preserving. And again, because we're a training program, we were able to take a little bit of extra time to make all of that work happen. After carefully chipping away the damaged concrete and cleaning around the recycled prison bar reinforcing, repair material was hand applied to form the step patches as you see in the bottom right image. Upper left image is the before conditions, upper right image is the cleaned reinforcing steel before the patching was applied. The prison rec yard is another situation where common repair practice and a more sensitive preservation approach did not agree with one another. If you'll notice in the lower left corner, that was the existing condition of a heaved up area of concrete that was a massive tripping hazard. Because of all of the visitors to the island, this is work that had to be done at night. Rather than cut out a squared off clean edge for the repair patch, the historical architect and the archaeologist preferred that we only remove concrete following the existing crack line. So this is something that would never happen on a common repair project. So again, preservation first. If we did what a normal concrete repair project outside of a landmark situation would do, we would have cut out a lot more concrete than we did. But in an effort to save historic fabric, we did the repair, 
uh, knowing that there may be some you know, subsequent failure at some point along, with, along the way. But as a continuous stewardship program, we're there long term. We can keep an eye on that. But the idea was to preserve as much historic as we could. You'll notice in the big background picture how bright the new concrete patch appears. And the image in the lower right was some gentle staining. And it doesn't hide it completely, but it does a pretty good job. Just a few more slides. This one shows a few uh, test methods that you would find on the ICRI certification program. Upper left is a test for carbonation. Upper right, Jamie is chipping away behind the bars to the required depth so that you can make sure that you've got stable steel and that you're able to clean it on all sides. The larger image is a bond pull-off test, one of the fundamentals of quality uh, assurance for concrete repair testing. These are things that you would have to either simulate or perform to pass the certification for doing concrete repair. While many people understand the need, cost, and complexities of preserving cultural heritage, there's much more work to be done to engage a greater number of people in this cause. CPI has defined action, preservation, to include activities and information that actively engages the public. The goal is an enhanced park visitor experience that goes beyond learning about history to include learning about what it takes to preserve the site for the long term. While CPI's action preservation efforts are informal at present, including small, loosely guided group tours of active participants, presentations to various professional and public audiences outside the park, and hands-on learning events at industry conferences, CPI hopes to increase this activity in partnership with the National Park Service and their friends organizations to include scheduled guided tours, viewing of CPI team members at work in the Concrete Preservation Lab, interpretive displays, and hands-on activities. At the end of the day, for the Concrete Preservation Institute. While the goals of career skills training and job placement, landmark preservation, industry leadership, and local community service drive CPI's commitment and success at all current and future CPI locations, CPI remains committed to measuring success one landmark and one soldier, sailor, airman, marine, and student at a time. Thank you. And please contact me anytime if you have any questions or would like to visit one of our sites.